Hey guys, and welcome back. I trust you guys had a fantastic week so far. Today we are going to continue where we left off last time. So if you do recall last time we did just the install, how to get everything running on your Raspberry Pi. We didn't go into the interface or anything. So that's going to be the plan today. We'll go in, run through the initial setup, uh, showcase the essential add-ons that I would always recommend uh, with your Home Assistant install. So with that said, let's go in and take a look. There we go. So we're back where we last left off. If you do recall, this is where we ended. It was still busy initializing. The SD card that I used on that part definitely was not working anymore. So I had to do a reinstall. I followed the exact same steps. And it'll end up on this page and it'll just take you through the onboarding process. So as you can see, my IP address also did change on these. So we have a few options here on the first page. Obviously, if you're new to Home Assistant, you'll just click on create my smart home. If you are restoring from a backup or you have a prep backup of a previous install, you can just go in and restore from that previous backup. Since this is going to be a new setup, we'll go through and click on create my smart home. So it's going to ask you a couple of questions right here. So we can just fill in these. Uh, it'll ask you for a name, a username, and a password. And to confirm the password as well. And then we can click on create account right here. Then it's going to ask you to enter in your address. Now, this is not for home assistants or anyone to track your data or collect your personal information. This is more of setting up, say, for example, specific automations. Like if you do connect your phone in the future or anything, if the if home assistant is aware of where it is located, you'll be able to set up automations in the future, depending on where you are located. So you can trigger certain automations to happen on your way to home from work, and stuff like that. So that's why you can go in and identify your specific location i'll fill that in later but uh, as i said you're welcome to go in and enter in your address that will definitely be helpful for automations in the future then we can click on next you can go in and select your country right there hit next and wait for a couple of additional steps. So here is where it asks you if you would like to go in and send some additional data. Uh, you can go through the information that they use and how they use the data or collect the data that you use in your specific install installation. In my case, I'm going to leave all turned off, hit next. So. If you have any devices in here already, it'll show you that we have detected a few of these devices already. I'm just going to click on finish right here. And that's it. Now it's going to take you to your home page. Now, if you do have a couple of devices, or in this case, it already picked up my living room TV, for example, it'll all show up in this home page. So your home page or your home, the overview section right here is where all of your devices by default is. Unless you edit or modify this specific page, it will always add all of your devices to this specific page by default, unless you modify or edit the dashboard right here which in that case, it will no longer automatically add these in here and you'll need to manually add those. So we have a couple of options in here. We have energy. So if you do have some energy devices, you can go in and add that. It'll allow you to track your energy consumption as well as if you have solar, you'll be able to track that information as well as the cost savings in here. Map is obviously, it'll show your home location. Obviously I didn't enter in anything right here. Logbook, this will show you all of the changes in your devices that's currently connected. So any changes of any devices or activity that you have in Home Assistant will all be displayed here. The same with the history. You can go in and choose an area or a device and it'll show you all the activity in that specific selected time period. Media, this is just a media where it'll show all of the media items that you have stored like text to speech, or if you want to add in your own media like playlists or music, for example. Then we have developer options. We'll come back into this. This is some additional settings you can view or check your configuration, for example. The settings one we have right here, as you can see, I do have an update. So I'll go in and update that as well after this. Uh, Home Assistant Cloud. So this is subscription based. We'll discuss that again in the future. 
devices and services. It'll, ju it'll just show you all of the devices that it has been detected and configured, as well as any new devices that it has discovered. So you can see that I have a couple of devices in here, especially from ESPM, that I already have connected to my homework home network, but has not yet been configured. Let's go back to the settings, devices, automations and scenes. We'll spend a lot of time in here. This is where you'll set up most of your automations, areas and zones, the add-ons, your dashboards, your voice assistants. We'll cover most of these in detail in future videos as well. For now, what the first things that we're going to do is we'll go into the add-on section right here. And as you can see, I don't have any add-ons installed. So this has changed quite a bit in recent years. We do have the option right here where it shows add on store. And in here, we'll see that we have quite a few add ons that we can go in and install. It'll list quite a few of them that's in here. For my recommendations, you can go through browse. If you see anything that piques your interest, obviously, you can go in and install that and play around with Jibit. Nothing stopping you from messing around and playing with the add ons that is available to you. So, the very first one that I'll recommend is definitely going to be the MQTT broker. So, we'll just go through and hit the install button and wait for that to complete. And once that has been completed, you'll see it shows us this little red icon. Then it gives us some additional options right here where it shows that starts on boot. And then also Watchdog, which you can enable. It'll just start the add on if it does crash or if something happens causing it no longer to work. If we enable Watchdog, it'll always try and start this, this add-on. Now, Mosquito is used for a lot of custom integrations or custom items. It's used for some devices that you may build yourself, or even when it comes to Tasmoto, you may also be using a lot of MQTT, and you'll need to have a broker for everyone to connect to. That's what we use this one for. Now we do have quite a few documentation on here, so you can follow and, and check these. If you want to secure your MQTT uh, server, you can do that. Normally in my case, I don't expose my MQTT server to the internet, so I don't mind not having in any configuration or just leaving everything as is in this section right here. And I'll just go in and hit the start button for that to be active. That will be the first add-on. As you can see, it did bring up and it started the application. So if we click on the log file right here and hit refresh, you'll see that it did start this service and it'll give us all the info. So if something does go wrong and you're not sure why it's not starting, especially when versions changes. I know previously we had some issues where you had to supply username and password and then they change it again. So there's always something. So you can always go into the log right here to see if there is anything that you may need to change in your configuration or just go through the documentation if there is anything specific you would like to change. But that's it for the MQTT broker. The next add-on that I have in here that I would highly recommend is going to be the Sambus Share. This is very simple. What it does is it's going to allow you to go through and share your Home Assistant folders. But that'll allow you to go in from your Windows PC just to access your Home Assistant files without needing to go through it through a terminal or manually trying to figure out where specific items are located, especially if you're like me and you're not that clued up working with the terminal itself using a Samba Share is definitely going to be a advantage for us in this instance. But there may be some configuration you need to do, especially when it comes to the username and password. Work group you can leave because these are standard with Windows machines, but the username, you can leave that as Home Assistant, but as soon as you try to access the share, it's going to pop up a message asking you, hey, you need to supply a username and password in order to access these. So you can leave it as Home Assistant or change it to anything else if you'd like. I'm going to leave mine to Home Assistant and then just enter in a password as well. And that should be good. So we can hit the save button right here. Go back to info. We can turn on Watchdog for this one as well. Hit the start button and see if we do run into any issues in the log files. So let's just hit refresh. You'll see that it did go in and it's busy starting up that information. Once it has started, it should show us a green button unless something is wrong. And as you can see, it went through and have started the Samba share. So what this will allow us to do is, for some reason it didn't update that it is started, but I think if we go back here to the add-on store real quick, you'll see that it shows us, yes, there we go. You'll see that it is started even in the log file. I'm not sure, not sure why it didn't update that time. So now if we open up any of our windows, for example, we can go in here and type in the IP address of our home assistant, which is 
.27. Hit enter. It's going to ask us for that username and password, which was all over case home assistant. And then the password that you have provided. And then you can also check the remember right credentials if you don't want to insert that again. There we go. So once you're in here, you'll see you have your backup folder here, some share folders, all your media items, add-ons, and some basic configs, which will allow you in the future if something does go wrong or you need to edit something specific a lot easier to access it this way instead of working through a terminal if you're not used to working with a terminal in that case. So that's going to be it for December, sir. The next add-on that I would highly recommend we also install is if I click back to the add-on store right here, we go a bit up and let's go through these is going to be ESP Home. This is probably going to be the most used one in my videos. I'm a big fan of ESP Home and this one is fairly simple to install. You just hit install and wait for that to complete. While that is installing, you guys do know ESP Home is more of just building your custom sensors from custom hardware or creating your own devices. So maybe you can't really find something specific you're looking for, or you just want to go in and create your own devices. Especially useful. It's quite cheap. ESP devices, very cheap to get a hold of and the sensors as well. And they have a lot of documentation. So no configuration necessary for this specific one. So all we'll do in this one is we'll definitely enable watchdog. And then we're also going to add this option right here that says show in sidebar. If we check this one, hit start, you'll see that it also shows that there is ESP now, uh, ESP home is now available in the sidebar. Since every time we add a device, it'll show up in ESP home. And if we need to make changes or if we're busy testing our sensors, it's a lot easier just clicking on the ESP home interface right here. We will get into setting up ESP home devices as well as the ESPs once we get into other videos as well. So going back to the add-on store, there's a couple of additional ones that I also usually add. So if we go back to the add-on store right here, there is a file editor that I just need to see if I can locate right here. The file editor, also real easy. All we'll do is we'll just hit install on this one. No big configuration needed. What it does, it allows us to make modifications to the Home Assistant configuration files without actually going in and finding the files or locating it or using command line. We can do it right from the interface in here. So if we enable it in the sidebar right here, we don't need to do any configuration for this one. We'll just hit start. Once it has started, you'll see that we now have access to all of the configuration files in Home Assistant in this section right here. So there we go, you can see that that has started. There is a web UI button right here you can use to open it up. And you also have that same option if you click on the file editor right here. And if we go through, you can see that, hey, we have all of our configuration files in one place where we can quickly go through and modify our information in Home Assistant that way. So a couple of more add-ons that I would also recommend to install. If we go back to the add-on section, we go back to the add-on store right here. We go a bit down. Definitely the one that I'm going to recommend is Node-RED. I know Home Assistance Automations has improved greatly and I barely use Node-RED for anything. However, it is one of the most used add-ons that is still available to everyone. It is extremely simple to set up and set up some automations using Node-RED as an alternative to the Home Assistant's default interface. However, I do believe that Home Assistant did improve massively in their automations game. And I mostly just use the automations within Home Assistant itself instead of Node-RED. So once that's installed, we can do a watchdog and show in sidebar. If you're going to make use of Node-RED a lot, you can go in and enable that as well. It is not needed to have it in here. However, if you don't show it in the sidebar, you may need to go through the interface, go back to this add-on to enable it in this section. So it looks like it did give me an error. So we may need to check the log or the configuration for this one. So if you go to configuration, you see it looks like it does ask us to enter in a username and password and also ask us to enable SSL. Now for this, 
I don't think I need to use SSL since this is going to be a local only install. I may cover this in a future video. If you do want to use SSL, that is for accessing it outside of your network in the future. And then for a username and password, I'm just going to keep it simple right here because there's not really any remote access to this machine. And do a password and hit the save button on that and see if we can get that to start now. Go back to the log file. There we go. And it looks like it is setting up the information for us. Go back to info. Node right here. And as you can see, it shows that it is busy starting the add-on install. So if you go back to the add-ons and open up the node red right here, you can see that it is in the log file. So go through that. It looks like it has connected. Go back in here, just click on open web UI. There we go. And as you can see, there we go. We have Node Red installed. We can go in and start setting up our flows and automations in there. Obviously, this would be covered in a different video, but now we do have that installed. Just one more. So, for the last one that we do have in here, that's going to be a custom one that we need to add in here. It's the Google Drive backup one. I know Home Assistant does fantastic backup, and you have the option to map your own network drives and do a backup on there. However, it's a lot easier to also have a cloud backup or something in your Google Drive that you know automatically pushing backups onto there. I do have a previous video on this as well. I may redo it, but it is this integration right here. So if we just go down, it's fairly easy to do. We need to go in and copy this link right here. And I'll leave a written article and a link to these as well in the description. So if we go to our Home Assistant right here, we can click on these little three dots where it says repositories. And then we can just paste in the additional repository for that one. It may take a while to add it in here, but once we have added it, it should show up. We may need to refresh this page for it to show up. So just go back to add on store and it should show up. There we go. And as you can see right here, it just updated and now it is available right here. So same process. We don't really need to do a lot with this one. It's just install. Once we start it, um, it, it'll ask us to authenticate with our Google accounts, which will just ask us where we would like to save our backup files and set up a schedule. I will cover that in a future video, but this is fairly simple and the documentation is fairly up to date as well. So it should be fairly quick for everyone to set this one up as well. There we go. We can definitely do a watchdog for this one. We don't need to show this in the sidebar, so we should be able to just hit on start right here. There is some configuration in here, so we can say like how backups it needs to keep, and then the days between the backups. Usually I'll do mine like seven in between, so say like, hey, seven, seven six days. Uh, usually I'll do just seven days between my backups. And I'll normally just keep like three or two in here, but you can customize this depending on the amount of space that you do have available for that. If we open up the web UI right here, you'll see that it asks you to authenticate with your Google Drive account. And that'll open up a Google page where it'll ask you like, hey, please open with your Google account. And once you have selected the account, you can just go through and copy that string that's given to you right here. And we can go back to the add-on to set it up. So we'll paste this right in here, hit the save button, and that's it. Now it has been connected to our Google accounts and we can go through some of these settings and just create that. So you can see it picked up an existing folder so I can use that information or I can go in and create a new one. Um, fairly simple, if you guys do want an in-depth in setup on how to use these, um, I would be happy to go through it, but that should be fairly simple for you guys to go through and set these up. This is just to have a backup, which is extremely important.
And that is going to be it for this one. So now we have our Home Assistant. We have some initial add-ons installed. Um, when it's 2D add-ons, I would highly recommend you guys always check like, hey, those add-ons can be extremely intensive as well. So please, please be careful, especially if you are running it on a Raspberry Pi, that you are always monitoring like how much it's using of your CPU and to make sure that you do have enough resources to actually run your automations because that can also uh, pack quite a bunch if you start throwing a lot at a little raspberry pi to handle everything but with that said i think we're good to go in the next video we'll cover some esp stuff as well so um keep an eye out for that one and i hope you guys have a fantastic rest of the day